please turn with me in your Bibles, Mark chapter 16. Um, in the church Bibles, it's page 802. And um, I want to say a few words before we, before we read it. Um, you, you, and that's the reason why I came up here instead of asking someone else to read. Um, in, in most versions of the Bible, you'll notice uh, some notes. You'll notice a set of double brackets around more than half of the chapter. Um, and generally a note that says something along the lines of some of the earliest manuscripts do not include 16, 9 through 20. Um, and, and that um, causes concern and consternation to a lot of people. Well, how, how can we be confident in our Bibles um, if we're not entirely certain if these verses are original or not? Um, but, so for, it, it is... It is a self-evident fact that there are some disputed verses in the Bible. Um, we're not sure if they were original, and some copyists accidentally dropped them. Um, if it was maybe on the next page, and that page was lost throughout history, or if someone added them, um, whether whether accidentally or or intentionally over time. Um, but. That the fact we have these disputed sections, that the only two major ones are here in Mark chapter 16 and then John chapter 8. Um, it it's actually should be a source of confidence um, because unlike many other sacred books, um, the Christian Bible was freely copied and, and freely distributed. Um, we, we have um, you know, scriptures being copied in Alexandria, in Antioch, in Byzantium, um, throughout the Roman Empire, um, people are making copies of Scripture independently of each other, which is why these mostly small but a few significant changes were introduced to the text. But there was never an opportunity for anyone to change the Bible. So, so what I'm saying is nobody could take all the copies and say, well, I, I want to introduce this idea into Scripture. So I'm going to collect all the copies and I'm going to insert this idea into them. There were too many other copies being made in, in other places. It was impossible for anyone to systematically introduce a change into Scripture. Um, the, the Quran has the exact opposite history. Um, in, in the year 650, the uh, Caliph Abu Bakr um, ordered that all the copies of the Quran um, throughout the Muslim Empire be collected. He, he seized all of them, brought them all together so that he could um, put together his official approved copy of the Quran. So they don't have textual variants. And the reason why they don't is because they collected all of them and destroyed everything that didn't fit with what Abu Bakr and, and his scholars determined would be the correct reading. So I'm, I'm not saying he did, but he could have deliberately change the text of the Quran. Um, there, there's no possibility of that happening to the entirety of our Bible. Someone might have done it in a specific version. Um, so there's some uncertainty with Mark chapter 16, but we know on the whole that no one had the opportunity to remove an essential doctrine from Scripture. Um, what, what we have is a, a jigsaw puzzle, a hundred piece puzzle, and we have 101 pieces. So we're sure we have the original. We, we might not be certain exactly which word or which verse is original, but we know we have the original text of the scripture. We can't have confidence um, that, that the Bible has not been systematically edited, changed, or corrupted. So with that said, let's read Mark chapter 16. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices, so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, 
who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. But when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. After these things, he appeared in another form to two of them, as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe them. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at table. And he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then, the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. This is the word of our Lord. Will you pray?